more time Oh, giving you your heart This heart of mine Do it to me one more time, baby Can't get enough of your love Ooh, ooh Do it to me one more time Give me your love This heart of mine do it to me one more time, baby. Can't get enough of your love. Shout out to Lionel Richie. Just recently inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, dang, what took him so long? What's up, David? What's good? Yeah, uh, yeah. Lionel Richie's the man. He probably has about 5,000 songs that he probably has not even released. I know he's written about a million of them. Shout out to Lionel Richie. And he is the... Also, Lionel Richie is the coach on uh, American Idol for the past six years, and and I and I'm, I think I'm uh, I, I'm safe. To, it's safe to say that I speak for a lot of folks. I think America's waiting in line to get a hug from Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie is one of my favorites in the '80s. When Michael Jackson would be on hiatus from whatever um, Thriller beat it, I mean Thriller band or whatever. Off the wall, Lionel Richie would come in on his on his CDs, uh, dancing on the ceiling or whatever. So uh, those are my two go-tos in the 80s, Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson. So anyway, uh, this is your man Rico the Opinionist. Just about to share an opinion really quick. I got a client in a few minutes that's coming in and no, you know, trying to save lives, you hear me? Chanel Marie, hello. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm on YouTube. So check out my, when you when you get this, like, share, and subscribe. My my Facebook group page is Rico the Opinionist. TikTok Rico the Opinionist. Instagram, Twitter Rico the Opinionist. Uh, so let me share this brief thought. To what really is a dear letter or a shout out to um, Gabriel Union. You know when she said. Uh, and she said angrily with that deliver us from Eba angry face or mean girl's face or bring it on face or whatever it was with her movies. She always had the same mean face. Trans are being hunted down and harmed every day in America. No one says a thing. All right. Say Tammy Jackson. Good. What's up? Cypress Junior High School, Hollywood. You hear me? Hold on. Noah. You dig? So, uh. So yeah, Gabrielle Union made that de that declaration on the recent uh, recent colored awards or the NAACP Image Colored Awards. Now uh, we call it. It was one of those. Uh, I guess it was Pride Night that night, or Trans Night, or whatever it was. It was a whole lot of foolishness going on on this show. But uh, that particular this year. So recently, in my home state of Tennessee, in Nashville, there was a mass shooter. Has to be a trans dude or trans woman i think it was a boy trying to be a, a girl saying that she's a man or a boy saying what was it i don't know it's trans was he trying to be a boy or trying to be a girl but anyway gabriel union said that trans people are being hunted down and harmed uh gabriel that looks to be the other way around if you've read if you've seen the story the horrific story of this Fully loaded, fully armed trans person. Uh, and according to reports, is under a doctor's mental health care. It goes back to the old facts about homosexuality being, uh, you know, trans and all this stuff being mental illness. You know, for those of you who don't know, uh, the LGB, LGBTQIA, back in 1972, between 72 and 74, they lobbied to have homosexuality removed from the from the DSM, then DSM what two diagnostics, the statistical manual of psychiatric diagnosis, to have it removed uh, from being a mental illness. And so, <laughs> interesting that a trans who's under a doctor's care, reportedly, for mental illness, you know, being trans itself is mental illness. In my opinion, just me sharing my thoughts. Well, he has all these high-powered rifles and guns and goes into this Christian school and shoots up the little children. 
a school that he attended when he was in the sixth grade. I think he's 28 years old. He went in and shot three teachers, I think three kids or something like that. And so I just want to make sure Gabriel Union has heard the story. And because um, when, when people make those declarations about some kind of marginalized group, a small group being attacked, well, they're trying to be in line with the LG, with the liberal and LGBT agenda, mainly Democratic agenda, to try to get some kind of special law or rights for them. Y'all remember when uh, uh, it's usually accusing black people of something because she's in a black event accusing, you know, make that statement around trans people are being and, you know, we want to protect all black people. She stood on that stage and accused black people of hunting down and harming trans. She stood in that black space and made the statement, you know, and black and, and what's the name? So we're going to protect all black people. Oh yeah, oh she was oh she was a boss bitch, bad bitch that night. So where you at now, Gabriel? Uh <laughs> wasn't even the black trans that did that, isn't that something? Gabriel. So do y'all remember you know how they try to get these laws passed? They always seem to somehow associated with black people. Do y'all remember when they got that anti Asian crime bill passed? When it was it was two incidents. That happened one of them I, I think that one they try to make is as, as if black people were attacking Asians y'all wouldn't believe y'all believe that hunk of shit and Asians have been in black neighborhoods making all kinds of money from the food stamp to the beer money to sit loose cigarettes and everything else they send it sent their children to Harvard and Yale and Stanford off a of little food stamps and and uh send a little spoiled chopped meat from the back and then little smelly stores Selling candy to the kids, talking crazy, a little, all the little drinks, and, and selling all of the malt liquor. <laughs> but black people, the reason or was was being made to look like the catalyst for the creation of the anti-Asian hate crime bill. But wait a minute now. Didn't y'all see? No one tend to mention. And oh, by the way, and they signed it right away. Joe Biden, y'all president, signed it right away, no problem. And then... <laughs> Most recently, you've had two mass shootings dealing with Asians, Asians shooting up Asians. And I'm like, well, damn, do they get, so do they get charged with a, a hate crime? The Asians that were shooting up Asians, Asians in California? So y'all, black people, y'all, come on, man. Stop allowing us to be the scapegoat for everybody else's foolishness. And stop selling out so much. That you get made to look like a fool like Gabriel Union is right now. You know, so in my opinion, I think that she made that grandstand on that day so they can try to cook up some kind of anti-trans hate hate crime bill off the backs of blacks. Y'all wanna know why they really can't get that Emmett Till anti-lynching bill signed put together? Because there's some smart people in there who understand, like, wait a minute. I thought we already had lynching uh, laws in place, anti-lynching laws in place. But see what they're trying to do is y'all are not paying attention. Everything, every law that they try to pass, because every every law they try to pass, they always try to get it off the backs of blacks or attach it to it as an addendum, addendum to some kind of law that's, that's supposed to be for black people, but the LGBT always try to use us to get in the door. They always use black people as a Trojan horse to get in. I know y'all not paying attention because, you know, we just don't pay attention to the stuff that we need to pay attention to. And so that's why that Emmett Till, here yeah, the George Floyd thing won't pass because they try to probably stick some LGBT shit up in there like some, some gay dude or gay woman or trans at the police knee on a neck. <laughs> so we just, we need, we need better politicians. Every time, you know, and what else is not this? Hell, they won't pay, they probably won't, they won't, now they won't push reparations because you can't push L, you can't attach LGBT to it. But we're not paying attention. That's okay, y'all, I'll continue to pay attention. Uh, and, and they're just my thoughts. I think that she made those statements uh, to try to be some kind of, you know, how people love to say, well, we, we were 
fast forward, we were the ones who were leading the charge to try to get rid of the hate for the trans or hate for whatever group. And so I think that this, this incident and more to come blew up in her face. I know she didn't predict this. And everybody else who was saying that trans are always attacked. You know, I'm going to tell y'all officially, if trans are attacked, you know, they're dying because they lying. Trans, trans dudes who are trying to pose as women, stop lying to the dudes. And you won't die. Stop lying. A lot of these cases, if you hear these few cases, I'm not even going to say a lot, these few cases where they say the trans is physically assaulted or murdered, they never tell the whole story. The dude thought it was a girl. And the train didn't tell him no better. And then messed around, he started uh, put his hand down between the legs, just think he was finna rub his finger through a rose bush, end up pulling on a water hose. And it sent the man into immediate trauma. And he reacted out of immediate trauma, kicking the train's ass. So it's just like, we have to let somebody know if you have AIDS or HIV or any other, you know, deadly or whatever std you should let people know when you when you have when you normally have sex with somebody knowing you have full-blown AIDS or hiv that's considered a crime and people can get prosecuted for that trans people need to let people know who they are if you're a trans dude that call themselves like a heterosexual man but you went and got the bbl you know to look like a, a young janet jackson you got your face done hormones and all that tell that guy look I know the doctor did a good job on my, my breast, my booty, and, and I even got my wanker you no know, cut and, and split. Uh, I got my lips popping and everything else, but I'm going to tell you, sir, that I was born a man, baby. Yeah. So if, you, if, if they're honest like that, you wouldn't have to worry about trans. No dying, Gabrielle. They're dying because they lie. For the most part. Not all, but for the most part. And next, um, even if the guy's with it, guess what, trans? He don't need you to take it public either. If y'all get a chance to, you know, mess with some dudes. Because America's just a freak-ass place. It's just debaucherous. People are into everything. And so, I don't see why the trans dudes who are trying to pose as women... I don't think they, I don't know why they try to still think they got the lie to kick it. Because America's full of all kinds of freaks and weirdos. They do all kinds of stuff. It's nothing new. Just be honest. And a guy to go with it. But he may not be ready to tell everybody he gets down. He, he likes that, that bussy. He might not be ready to tell everybody. So trans, just because he sees you and allows you to chew him up. Or, or he might uh feed your prostate with his manhood from time to time. Or you may be one of those manatars. You're all woman up top, but still man at the bottom. He might not want you to put him on blast like that. Bobby, no, shout out to Bobby Valentino. But, but, oh yeah, speaking of which, you Bobby Valentinos of the world, if y'all gonna be trying to mess with trans prostitutes, pay them folks their money so they won't put you on blast. He was just saying, pay me my money, Bobby V. Where my money at, B? Where, where's my money, Bobby V? Y'all remember that video? He ran to, left his keys, his shoelaces, and his scarf behind to get to that damn elevator. And I think he left one of his shoes, too. So, there's honesty that has to be done on both parts, I guess. But, but, but seriously, though, on, on the part of people's right to privacy, privacy. And there's some guys who mess with these trans dudes. But you know what? That's something they view it as just a little sex, a little freaky sexual fetish. Sterling, what's up? What's up, bro? Uh, you, and you don't need to trans put those guys, putting those guys on blast. They might not be ready. They probably have wives. They may have prominent positions in society. And they just have a freaky fetish that they like to mess with trans dudes. But I will say this to the trans community. Give America about seven more years, because it's already happening on a, on a very small scale, but in about seven years, the straight men of all races in America are going to be proudly walking around with their trans girlfriend. So just hold on a minute. It's just like with fat chicks. Mama, everybody was knocking fat chicks down behind closed doors. After the club, when the fat chicks turned us down, we were knocked on the door. Boom, boom, boom. And it's like 2.30 in the morning. Who is this? 
Hey, Keisha, open the door. Who was that? You know it's me. It's Rico. What's up? Oh, oh, where you come from? Look, don't act like that. You, you know you know me. Oh, so what you what you trying to do? I'm trying to come in and see you. I'm no drunk and shit. All right, well, hold on a minute. She opened the door. She said, what's up? She said, there ain't nothing going on. I was in here asleep. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up, but though. You know what I'm saying? There's some old things. You hear me? Man, what's up, though? You know, there's some old things. Oh, yeah, you hear me? Next thing you know, you can take, go in the room, knock the pictures off the wall, move some furniture, get chewed up and screwed up. You hear me? And that's how I was. Didn't tell nobody. I was down there with Big Tasha. Man. So, and that went on. But then as years went on, you know, so many cats around there. And I'm talking about these weren't just sleppy dudes. It was dudes you look like on the cover of Essence magazine, brothers who like on men's health. No dude, everybody around there knocking down the big girl. And now, look, look, trans, the big girl is all out front. And dudes are publicly stopping and talking to thick and big girls, and that's what's wrong with them now. They tell you dudes, y'all stop talking to these chicks, validate these bras. That's why they talking small like they would like they a size six. Talking funky and smart to everybody. I'm like, my God. Y'all dudes in blue these bras heads are bigger than what it was already. Naturally. So trans dudes, give yourself a minute. You're gonna have to be in the dark in the late night hours, in the back of cars, in the deep parts of parks, in alleys, in empty houses, and you know uh, <clears throat> in uh getaways just hold hold your position about seven years five to seven years y'all be walking around here just like regular chicks but for now stop putting dudes on blast just like when the big girl do big girl come up to you in kroger you with your with your fine girlfriend around your friends and all of a sudden big tasha's Hey, uh, Rico, how you doing? Like, hey, Tasha, what's up? Well, I had fun last night. And then they looking at you upside your head like, really? And I had to say, it hey, wasn't like that. Uh, uh, don't, uh, uh, oh, so you don't know me now. Uh, okay, uh, oh, okay, you don't know me right now. Uh, okay, it's like that. But I'm going to see you, though. I'm going to see you. And you know, you embarrassed. And then how about them dudes? They get Big Tasha pregnant and go up in, in the court for child support. She come over there, and he's shamed. You know she gets funky in the courtroom too. You done, and we all look like, man, you done got big Tasha pregnant. God, no. Oh. So, but anyway, I said all that to say. It was a horrific thing that happened in Nashville. Horrific. Trans, mentally ill trans, shot up a school, little kids, middle school, little kids. Killed little kids, killed some adults. And so whatever whatever thoughts that Gabriel Union and any other liberal left or Democrats had about Trotsky trying to put together a anti-hate trans bill, forget about it. It's like they're the ones who are hunting innocent people. Uh, but anyway, this is your man Rico. Rico the Opinionist. I'm on YouTube. Mess with me. Share, like, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. And also, don't forget about my book. My, not my book. I'll call it a PDF. Because, yeah, it's a PDF. It's a short story. That I wrote years ago. But it's still pretty good because fatherlessness is very relevant. I think a lot of these dudes don't have fathers messing around with these big guns and these, uh, messing around and trans dudes. Ugh. Ugh. They need prayer. Uh... Yeah, it's called The Greatest Pain Ever Felt, Conversation with Absent Biological Father Who Never Wanted to Be Found. It's only $10. Hit your boy that cash app, dollar sign, Rico the Opinionist, O-P-I-N-I-O-N-I-S-T. And uh, if you decide to hit me up, please leave an email address so I can send that. It's in a PDF format, send it directly to you. And so I'm looking at the clock. Oh, dang. My client, my client's going to be up here in about five minutes. Let me get my arts. This damn office so I can meet them. Y'all be cool. Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.